The Nine Muses were minor goddesses of Greek mythology who were closely linked to the arts and sciences. They guided and inspired mortals in their creation of literature, music, drama, and other artistic and scientific ventures. The Muses rarely featured any major myths of their own, but they were often invoked and remained among the most important of the Greek pantheon of deities. The Muses were born to the Olympian god Zeus and the titaness of memory, Mnemosyne. According to the myth, Zeus desired Mnemosyne and visited her often. He slept with her for nine consecutive nights and Mnemosyne delivered a daughter each night. The girls collectively became known as the Younger Muses. This was so that they could be easily distinguished from their elder muses, the titan goddesses of music from the earlier pantheon. Some say that Zeus and Mnemosyne created the nine muses to celebrate the Olympian god's victory over the titans as well as to forget all the terrible evils of the world. Their beauty, lovely voices, and dancing helped relieve the sorrows of the world. Each of the muses ruled over a particular element of the arts and sciences, offering inspiration in her specific subject. Calliope The eldest of them all, Calliope was the muse of epic poetry and eloquence. She was said to have had the most beautiful voice of all the muses. Calliope is usually depicted holding laurels and two Homeric poems. She was considered the leader of the muses. Cleo Cleo was the muse of history and of lyre playing. She is often depicted with a clarion in her right arm and a book in her left hand. Erato The goddess of mimic imitation and erotic poetry, Erato's symbols were the lyre and love bows and arrows. Euterpe The muse of lyric poetry and music, Euterpe was credited with creating wind instruments. Her symbols included the flute and panpipes, and she was often portrayed with various musical instruments. Melpomene Melpomene was the muse of tragedy. Her depictions include a knife and a tragedy mask. Polyhymnia The muse of sacred hymns, sacred poetry, eloquence, dance, agriculture, and pantomime. Polyhymnia was one of the most popular of the muses. Her name means many, poly, and praise, hymns. Terpsichore The muse of dance and chorus, and in some versions a muse of flute playing, Terpsichore is said to be the most well-known of the muses, with her name in the English dictionary defined as an adjective meaning pertaining to dancing. She's always depicted wearing a laurel wreath on her head, dancing and holding a harp. Thalia The muse of idyllic poetry and comedy, also known as the protector of symposiums, Thalia was often depicted with a theatrical comedy mask in her hand. Urania The muse of astronomy, Urania's symbols were the celestial sphere, stars and bow compass. In some versions of the muse's story, their mother, Nemosyne, gave them to Apollo, the god of music, and the nymph, Euphemy. Apollo himself tutored them in the arts, and when they grew up, they realized that nothing in regular human life interested them. They wished to dedicate their whole lives to the arts, with each having her own specialty. Apollo brought the goddesses to Mount Eliconas, upon which an old temple of Zeus once stood. From then onwards, the Muses' role was to encourage and support artists while enhancing their imagination and inspiring them in their work. The Muses spent a great deal of their time with the other Olympian gods, especially with Dionysus and Apollo. They were mostly to be found on Mount Olympus, seated near their father Zeus. They were always welcome whenever there was a feast or a celebration, and they would often entertain guests by singing and dancing. They attended the weddings of Cadmus and Harmonia, Peleus and Thetis, and Eros and Psyche. They also appeared at funerals of famous heroes like Achilles and his friend Patroclus. As they sang lamentations at these funerals, they ensured that the greatness of the deceased individuals would always be remembered and that those who mourned didn't stay forever in sadness. Although the Muses were lovely and kind goddesses, 
they also had their vengeful side, just like most of the deities of the Olympian pantheon. They were generally thought to be the best performers, and they didn't like it when anyone challenged their position. However, this happened quite often. Many held contests against the Muses to see who the better performers were, but the Muses were always victorious. After they had proved their superiority, the Muses made sure to punish their opponents, like Thamaris, the Sirens, and Pierides for going against them. They took away Thamaris's skills, plucked off the feathers of the Sirens, and transformed the female Pierides into birds. In Greece, praying to the younger Muses was a common practice by those who believed that their minds would be inspired and their work would be filled with divine skill and energy. Hesiod, the great Greek poet, claimed that the Muses visited him once when he was pasturing sheep on Mount Helicon. They gave him the gift of poetry and writing, which inspired him to write most of his later works. The Muses gifted him with a laurel staff, which was symbolic of poetic authority. In Hesiod's Theogony, which turned out to be the most famous of his works, he describes the genealogy of the gods. He states that this information was given to him directly by the nine Muses at their meeting. The first section of the poem contains praise of the Muses and is dedicated to the nine goddesses. Even the great Homer claims to have invoked the Muses while working on both the Odyssey and Iliad. There were several shrines and temples throughout ancient Greece that were dedicated to the Muses. The two main centers were Mount Helicon, Boeotia, and Pyria, located in Macedonia. Mount Helicon became the location associated with the worship of these goddesses. The Nine Muses have been mentioned in numerous paintings, plays, poems, and statues. They are among the most famous characters of Greek mythology, implying the extent to which arts and sciences were held in high esteem by the ancient Greeks. Many of the ancient Greek writers, such as Hesiod and Homer, invoked the Muses, asking for inspiration and assistance. The Muses were credited with inspiring some of the greatest art, poetry, and music created by mortal men and women throughout history. Even today, artists look for their muse, whoever that may be. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.